is risen. Thank you so much for joining us today on this very special Resurrection Sunday. We have been missing all of you so much. It was so exciting to see so many of your faces and hear your voices this week through your Easter greetings. Check this out. He is risen. God bless you all. Happy Easter. He's risen. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. Feliz Domingo de Resurrección. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Christ. Un feliz día de resurrección. Muy lindo día de resurrección. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. He's risen. Feliz día de resurrección. Feliz día de resurrección. Hey, Christ first. Happy Easter and happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Feliz día de resurrección. Blessed. Easter. Que Dios me lo bendiga en el día de la resurrección. La familia. Muere. Feliz día de resurrección. Happy Easter. He is risen. Happy Easter to everyone. Feliz Día de Resurrección. Happy Easter. Love the Waddells. Cristo vive. Amen. Happy Easter. Feliz Día de Resurrección. Cristo vive. Amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. From our family to yours. Well, today is the day that we remember and celebrate the day that Jesus accomplished his mission on earth. Three days he spent in a tomb. And for three days, his disciples felt lost, confused, terrified, and defeated. Their worlds were completely turned upside down when they watched their master, their teacher, their beloved friend die on a Roman cross. But it wasn't the disciples who were defeated. It wasn't Jesus who was defeated. It was death that was defeated when Jesus emerged from that tomb alive and well, just as he said he would. That is what we are celebrating this morning. And while we may feel lost and confused, even terrified or defeated over the sickness that has been plaguing our world today, it's nothing new. Our world has been plagued by sin and death since the day that Adam and Eve took a bite from that apple. But we have nothing to fear because our God has delivered us from sin and death. Our God has given us the victory in Jesus that was promised way back in the Garden of Eden. What a joy it is to celebrate together this morning. And one of the best ways to celebrate anything is to sing. So I want to invite you to sing this medley of Easter hymns with me. Now don't be shy about singing along from your living rooms. Can't be any more awkward than it is for me to sing alone in this film studio to this uh, camera. So sing along. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. He lives, he lives. 
Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. God bless you, and welcome to Easter at Christ First. Buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not I try to hide It was my tool Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Oh my 
worship our King. Come, let's bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, you break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Hey, if it's your first time experiencing Christ First Covina, we are so glad that you chose to join us this morning. Please click on the link in the description or the notes section that will take you to our online connection card. We just want to get to know you a little bit and celebrate that you are online with us today. If you have any prayer requests today, please send them to us through email. We would love to be praying for you. And just a reminder, if your prayer request is confidential, please let us know in the email so that it will only be shared with the staff. Otherwise, we'll be publishing your prayer request in our prayers and cares list so that our entire church body can be praying for you. Our youth group meets every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. via Zoom. If you're in middle school or high school and you'd like to get connected with our youth group, click on the link in the description or email our youth pastor Cameron for more information. 
It's so important for all of us to stay as connected as possible during these times. That is why we are encouraging everyone to get connected with a community group. Please send us an email so that we can help you find a group that best fits your needs. And don't forget that next week we start a brand new series that will focus on how to deal with resentment. You'll be hearing more about that later from Pastor James. And speaking of Pastor James, get your Bibles or your Bible apps ready to hear a special Resurrection Day sermon from our pastor. Happy Easter, everyone. My name's James, and I'm excited to celebrate this historic event in Christianity called the Resurrection. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, it's no secret that by far the best Easter candy on the planet is the Cadbury Easter egg. Now, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's delicious, and, and real bunnies, if you see on here, uh, lay these amazing uh, candies. It's uh, just miraculous. I know, I know you may disagree, and you have the right to be wrong. You may say, uh, power to the people, but... I don't want to hear another peep out of you. And by the way, there's only three left in here because uh, my little peeps, my kids got, got into these peeps. Um, now, don't get so offended uh, about me saying that peeps aren't that good that you go off the peep end. All right, now eggs, bunnies, and peeps, they don't really have anything to do with the Easter story. And if you're going to pick an animal, it's going to be sheep. No, not those kinds of sheep, these kinds. Shepherding sheep is at the center of the Easter story. Shepherds would protect, provide, and watch over the sheep in ancient Israel. And you and I, we need a shepherd. Maybe you haven't thought about this before, but you need a shepherd for eternity, and you need a shepherd for every day. If you look at Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my Shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And when David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he was referring to who God is. God is not distant or disengaged. God is intimately engaged and connected. He watches over. He protects. He provides. He's not a force, he's a father. If you don't know this about God, then you don't know the God who created you. There are sermon outline notes. You can follow along if you'd like. Number one is you need a shepherd for eternity. You need a shepherd for eternity. David said he restores my soul. Now David's talking here about the essence of your personhood, your soul. See, when you die, your physical body ceases to live, but part of you, your soul, lives on. Sometimes the Bible uses the term soul and spirit interchangeably. What's important here is to understand that all of who you are is both physical and non-physical. Your body dies, and another part of you, your soul or spirit, lives on. Look at Luke 23, 46, where Jesus says on the cross, as his physical body dies, he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. See, your identity, who you truly are, is more than just your physical body. Your soul will not die. It will outlive your body, and it needs to be rescued eternally, spiritually rescued. Now, your physical and non-physical part of you needs to be rescued and saved from the effects of sin. Now, I believe that the devil loves to distract people from the reality that they literally need their soul rescued. Getting rescued is a big deal. Have you ever been in a place where you needed to be rescued, but you didn't even know it?
See, Easter is a reminder that we are all in trouble, heading towards certain death, in front of a speeding train barreling down the tracks towards us. And Jesus came to rescue us. See, sin separates us from God. Sin unplugs us from God. Don't you hate when you forget to plug in your cell phone into a charging cable and you wake up ready to start your day, you grab your phone and it's dead. See, a cell phone needs to be plugged in because it's not self-sufficient. It is not its own power source. And when you unplug it, it starts to die. If we are unplugged from the Creator, we have started to die. That's the impact of the sin of disobedience. See, we can attempt to play God in our own lives, but we were never designed to play that role because the power is not found in us. We are not self-sufficient. No matter how much money you have, how much influence you have, how many views your video has on Instagram, <laughs> we are all moving towards certain death. You can't stop it. See, this pandemic has reminded humanity that we can't control when death happens. Now, I've been blessed to do uh, memorial services of people who have lived 80 years, 90 years, and it's, it's especially tragic when uh, memorials happen for younger people. You know, often you hear the phrase, that was a life cut short, and that hurts. And everyone in the room at that kind of memorial knows that it's not the way it's supposed to be. We all felt that when Kobe and his daughter Gigi and all those young people on that helicopter perished, <laughs> just gone way too soon. But even losing a 90-year-old grandparent, it's still too soon for that person's child or grandchildren. Now, I miss my grandpa. He was tall and, and strong and always had an encouraging smile and encouraging things to say to anyone he met. I'll never forget going into the bank or the grocery store, and he would be so encouraging uh, to the workers there. Or he'd give me these amazing bear hugs as a child. And I, I just miss him so much. I wish I had more time with him. See, we can't be self-sufficient, no matter how hard we try. Sin has unplugged us from God, and we're separated from God. Some people will say this, well, I'll just do a ton of good works, but you can't do enough because you're not perfect. Jesus said in John chapter 10, he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he'll be saved and will go in and out and find pasture, find peace. I came, Jesus said, that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for you, the sheep. See, Jesus is the door. He is the way to eternal life. And he's the good shepherd who laid down his life for you. He has offered to rescue your soul from the effects of your sin debt. And that's not always clear to some people. If you've never really understood Easter, this is going to help you put the puzzle together. Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages or consequences of sin is death. What you will pay for even the smallest sin, not alone the many big ones, is eternal separation from God if you die in your sin. If you die in your sin, you pay. But the gift of God through Jesus is that if by faith you authentically place your trust in Christ as your Savior and Lord, then you won't die in your sin. You'll die in God's grace. God gives everyone this choice to make. Would you prefer to die in sin or to die in grace? God doesn't keep anyone from heaven. People choose to not go there. When you choose to die in grace, you go to heaven. 
the Bible says. Jesus chose to die on the cross because he loves you and wants to save you. But will you love him back? See, you need a shepherd for eternity. Number two is you need a shepherd for every day. You need a shepherd literally for every day. And many people think Jesus is only, you know, a shepherd for eternity. They think, well, I'm rescued from my sins. Uh, I have a get out of hell for free card. And now that I know I'm going to heaven, I can live like hell. Some only turn to Jesus when things are really bad in their life. You know, you have challenges in life and then you consider Jesus. And if you don't have challenges, you ignore Jesus. But Jesus isn't only the Lord of your challenges. He's the Lord and wants to be the Lord of all your life if you invite him in. But here's what's cool about those who only come to Jesus during a challenge. He will accept you as well. See, Jesus was crucified beside a thief. Now, this thief was convicted of crimes by the Roman Empire and crucified. See, that's a real challenge in his life. And it wasn't until this life challenge that the thief faces that he turns his heart to God. And Jesus graciously accepts him. See, many of us are not only isolated at home, but we're really scared of this coronavirus. Actually, we're not really scared of the virus. We're scared of potentially dying from it. We're scared of death. In this current challenge in our world, God will accept your heart if you're ready to turn to him. Psalm 23, verses 4 and 5. It says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you, for God, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. As in God's shepherding leadership, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David's saying God is our shepherd, not only in heaven to come, but in the here and now. God is with you. He watches over you. God provides and protects you every day as a good shepherd. And God designed a support system of provision and protection as you go through life. Its biblical term is the body of Christ. And today we know it by the term church. See, the ancient Greek language that the New Testament was written in that original word church in the Greek is ekklesia, which literally means a gathering of people, not a building, but a gathering of people under one person and purpose. The one person is Jesus. The one purpose is his hope-filled rescue plan for sinners. Jesus started this movement of gathered people over 2,000 years ago that continues today in local expressions of the body of Christ. You not only need Christ, but you need the church and all that Jesus provides through the church. Every single one of you will face a season that is extremely challenging that you can't control. So you have things in your past, things right in front of you, and you have things that are coming that you don't have control over. And you're going to need God to shepherd you every day and God's provision for daily shepherding is the gathering, the ecclesia, the church. Listen to my friend Ozzy Mora's story. Well, I grew up in the San Gabriel Valley, which was uh, the surrounding cities, La Puente, Almani, um, West Covina, and my upbringing was a little bit different than others uh, since I had to move uh, from time to time. I went to maybe four elementaries, two junior highs, uh, high school, continuation school. I uh, ended up doing time in, in juvenile camps also. I remember my, my best friend, when I was in my second junior high, uh, had introduced me to alcohol, and his sister introduced me to meth. 
and I was only 12 years old at that age. Um, and I was really young, and so uh, it was really just looking to be a part of, you know, having to be able to hang around some friends that would accept me. A lot of the times, I really didn't understand what a steady home was. And so uh, for me, being out uh, with my friends was the stability that I thought I had found. I never knew that God was always taking care of me. Every time I ended up in, in a jail cell, I always thought that I deserved it. And now that I found God, I, I believe now that he was protecting me. And I didn't know the consequences that were happening around me because at this age, I was already a father. Uh, my son was um, five years old and and I didn't realize that I was affecting his life. And my solution was always to go back to what I knew. And, and that was just to, to be lost in my addictions. And one day, once again, I had relapsed. And I remember telling my son, get up, let's go. And then they go, where are we going? We're going to church. To church? Yeah, let's go to church. And I gave my life to the Lord that day. I believe that he came into my life that day and, and told me to get up and go. I felt that that was who I was gonna be the rest of my life. And now that I serve the Lord, I thank God for that because I can't believe that I am where I am today if it wasn't for him speaking to me that day and telling me, get up and go. And my whole life was full of hardships. You know, we didn't have enough. We didn't have a place. We didn't have uh, good friends, you know, and, and I thank God for that now because I do have good friends now. And my church is a place where I can come and and have those friends that I didn't have when I was young. They began to want me to to pull me in. And so I thank those people that were a big influence in my life. And I know God strategically placed them in my life to make a change. And I am grateful for all those people that believed in me when I couldn't believe in myself and introduced me to the Lord. What an amazing story of life change and of God's shepherding in the life of Ozzy. Now, you've probably heard this joke. See, there's a flood and a man gets to the top of his roof and prays to God for help as the waters rise. Now, a guy in a canoe comes by to help, but then he leaves. A guy in a motorboat, he comes by to help, but then he leaves. Then a helicopter comes flying in uh, to help, but then the pilot flies off and leaves the man on the roof. They all left because the man on the roof told each of them, hey, I'm praying to God to help me. I have faith. And then the waters rose and the man drowned. When he got to heaven, he said to God, God, I had faith in you, but you didn't help me. You let me drown. To this, God replied, well, I sent you a canoe, a motorboat, and a helicopter. <laughs> See, in the same way, God has sent you the church to help you live life to the full. Don't miss God's provision of His ecclesia for you and your family. Don't just attend church, but be the church. Be connected relationally. And we really encourage everybody not only to come on Sundays and, and check in, and right now we're doing church online as you're experiencing right now, but we encourage everyone to go into a small group. We call them community groups. And when we can gather publicly again on Sunday mornings, I encourage you, show up, because just showing up will make a difference. 
in the life of a person like Ozzy and his family, who decided to, uh, he decided to take his kids to church one day because he was desperate for hope. And God wants to use you in the life of a family like Ozzy's. And if you do accept God's help through his church, God is going to use you as you actively are the church to help others in their need. And even right now, there are so many stories in our church and in our small groups of people serving each other, praying for each other, calling each other, checking in, bringing each other groceries or whatever is needed. See, because you make the decision to connect to the gathering, you can literally change the lives of people who watch our online service and would like to connect in a community group themselves because they are looking for hope and acceptance, and it's maybe your personality that God designed that is going to connect to them in a special way and cause them to want to stay connected and be encouraged and be shepherded. And so you make a difference just showing up in a small group. But when you don't connect, you're kind of turning your back on these people. You're turning your back not only on people like Ozzy, but his whole family as well. And they desperately need you to be there for them. Now, you shouldn't get plugged into church or a small group because I made you feel guilty. Because that's not right, and that won't last. You should get plugged into church because God says you need to be shepherded. And because you need to partner with God's plan to reach the world with the hope found in the gospel. That's sustainable. That will keep you connected even when you don't feel like it. Remember John 10, Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I lay my life for you. I lay down my life for you, the sheep. Jesus is standing at your heart's door, and he's knocking. Jesus was knocking in your past years like he was with Ozzy. Jesus is uh, knocking in your past months and, and, and weeks as we go through this trial. He, he, he's knocking right now in this present moment, this morning. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. See, a door can only do one of two things. <laughs> you walk through doors. You walk through doors every day. There are two functions that a door uh, can only be one or the other. It can be closed or it can be opened. It's not any more complicated than that. And all of you are doing one or two things with God. You have the door open right now with God or you have closed the door to your heart with God. Jesus made it very simple by describing himself as the door. See, there is no relationship without a choice. God gave you a free will to accept or reject him as his shepherding and his shepherding plan through the church. See, he's a good father. He doesn't force people to come to him, but he's hoping you will. See, God made a way for you to be restored to Him. Your sin separates you from God and will cost you everything. And you have a moment right now to let God in, to quit acting like you are your own power source, to quit acting like you have a better idea than God's plan for Ecclesia. Will you believe Jesus and become a follower of Christ? Will you become a Christian in Easter 2020 in the midst of all the uncertainty with this coronavirus and live the rest of your days to the fullest? Live with the assurance that one day you're going to be in heaven with your creator for eternity. You can make that decision. It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you're a sinner. Believe that God is perfect and true and holy, and that you are not. 
we fall short of the glory of God. But God loves you so much that B, we need to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, on our behalf. He sacrificially gave himself for us. And then C, C is very important. This is where you decide to open the door or close the door. C is choose. You need to choose to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Following him as, a, as your Savior is accepting his free gift that he gave you on the cross. And then as, his, as your Lord, following J Jesus as your Lord means he is your leader, that you want to learn more about him and what he believes is the best for you and your life. You can learn about him in his word. It's following his shepherding plan through the ecclesia as well. And just honoring him. First thing you do in the morning is think, how can I honor Jesus today? And then do that in your relationships. Do that when you're by yourself. A, admit, B, believe, and C, choose. Let me pray for you right now. God, I pray. I pray for everybody who is tuning in this Easter morning. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that if, if, if they're ready to open the door and to allow you to come into their lives, to change their lives, to take away the power of sin in their lives so that they can live in the gift of grace and to come to realize that they have a shepherd for eternity. They have a shepherd for every day. I pray that you would bless them, Lord. Give them the courage. Give them the faith to open that door right now. And Father, I pray that you would be glorified in all this. We thank you for the work of life transformation that you are still in the business of even amidst this coronavirus. In Jesus' name. Now, if you've made that decision, if you're ready to make uh, that decision, I want to lead you through uh, a prayer of salvation, a prayer to God, thanking Him for saving you from the effects of sin. Pray this prayer to God out loud, no matter where you're at or who you're with. If you're more comfortable praying this silently, God still hears you, and you can do that. Pray this, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. Jesus, I know that you are knocking on my heart's door and asking to come into my life. So I open my heart's door. I ask you to come in and live with me, to forgive my sins, to be my Savior, my Shepherd, and my Lord. From this day forward, I'm going to live with you, love you, and follow you. Thank you for forgiving me of every sin and making me a new person. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you've made that decision this morning, I want to encourage you. Let somebody know. Let us know. Click on the button that you see on the screen. Email us. Uh, throw a message in the chat window. We would love to celebrate your decision and the difference that God is making in your life in this moment. And we would love to walk with you and to grow in God with you. We would like to give you information about being a part of our ecclesia, of, of jumping into a, a small group so that you can get the encouragement and shepherding from Jesus through his church, and so that you can also be a support to other people as well. Let us know. We're here for you, and we are cheering you on. Happy Easter.
is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to wash our feet. Now at His feet we bow. who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see your name your name Your name is 
I want to say thank you uh, to all of you for listening so well. Next week, I am so excited to start a brand new series. It is called Rotten, The Reality of Resentment. See, we've all been rotten, harboring resentment against maybe loved ones in our confinement, um, maybe resentment towards our community, our country, or even towards God. We've all dealt with this thing called resentment. Come back next week as God's Word equips us to navigate our feelings of resentment. And many of you are dealing with this on a new unexpected level because of the coronavirus. So come back next week. Let's learn from God's Word together because nobody likes rotten. And we're going to go into a time of offering right now, the opportunity that you have to worship God by giving back a portion of what He has blessed you with. In John 3, uh, verses 16 and 17, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. So we give because God gave first. And thank you for your generosity. As you faithfully give, you allow us uh, to continue to be an active local church, making a difference in the San Gabriel Valley and literally around the world online. And when you give to uh, you also give uh, through us as you give to us. You give through us so that we can continue to make a difference in families like Ozzy Mora's family. If you're in need at all, I just want to tell you, please email us or call the church. Let us know uh, of any needs that you have. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to bring you groceries. Uh, even if somebody on your street, a neighbor, if you hear them in need of anything, let us know. We would love to generously come by and bless them. Now, if you're in a higher risk category, you need to stay home and stay safe. And if you would like to receive a call weekly, we are calling people uh, on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, but we would love to call you simply to check in on you, uh, to pray for you, uh, to bring you groceries if you need anything, uh, so you can stay home and stay safe. Just let us know. Now there's three ways that you can give. Uh, you can mail in your gifts, uh, you can do online giving, and you can do uh, text to give, which is uh, very simple and convenient. You just text the amount you would like to give to the number 626-784-4882. Let me pray. God, thank you for the opportunity that we have now uh, to give to you. Uh, God, you encourage us to continue to be faithful in being generous uh, with everything that you have blessed us with. And I just pray, Lord, that you would multiply these gifts that we uh, give unto you, that we give cheerfully to you, uh, multiplied into life change uh, so that we can hear and celebrate more stories, uh, just like uh, Ozzy Moore's story that he shared with us this morning. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, another Easter service has come and gone, but I guarantee it was one that you will never forget. Thanks again for joining us today. And don't forget, if you have any kids, make sure you continue watching as our children's ministry director, Jen, has a very special lesson prepared just for them. Otherwise, we pray that you'll have a wonderful Easter Sunday and a wonderful week in Christ. God bless. Good morning, happy Easter everyone. Today we celebrate the greatest gift ever offered to everyone everywhere. In truth, as kids, it's really easy to get super excited for the fun of Easter, like an Easter basket filled with candy and maybe a new toy. And it's not just the kids that get excited. As a grown up, I get really excited for, well, for a new Easter dress and decorating my house with decorations and making a special meal and seeing my kids and a petting zoo at church and watching you all run around for an egg hunt. And then there's the peanut butter eggs and the marshmallow peeps and the chocolate. Oops, sorry. I think I might be getting a little bit more excited about Easter than a kid. You know, we can think bunnies and chicks or even baby pigs. Wasn't that the cutest little baby pig we had here? 
Well, it's easy to get distracted by all the stuff about Easter that we could forget what we're actually celebrating. Well, for the last two weeks, we've gone through the events that happened leading up to today. There was the donkey that Jesus rode in on on Palm Sunday. And then there were the coins, which was the money that Judas got for telling on Jesus. And then there was the little cup that was part of the Last Supper meal that Jesus ate with his disciples. And there were the praying hands reminding us that Jesus prayed in a garden with God. There was the piece of leather that symbolized that Jesus was beaten. There was the crown that they put on Jesus' head and made fun of him with. There were the nails that they put into Jesus when they crucified him on that wooden cross. There was the dice to remind us that the soldiers were actually playing games for Jesus' clothes. There was the spear that they stuck into the side of Jesus to make sure that he was dead. The piece of cloth that um, was used to wrap Jesus when he died that reminded us that the people who believed in Jesus wanted to make sure he got a death that was respectable. And then finally, there was that stone that we showed last week, and this was rolled in front of the tomb that Jesus' body was laid in. Which brings us to the egg that I left for last week. Well, are you ready to see inside? Or should we just wait? We can wait, right? Nah, that would be a really mean thing to do to all of you on Easter. So ready? Lean in. I want you to see this. Are you ready? It has nothing in it. That's right. It's empty. Is that a mean trick that I'm playing on you? No way. See, because it's empty for a reason. It's empty because that's what happened on the first Easter morning about 2,000 years ago. Our egg is empty because the tomb of Jesus was empty. You know why it was empty? Not because Jesus' friend stole his body and hid it. Or it's not empty because a rich man decided he changed his mind about giving up his tomb for Jesus to be buried in there. You know why it's empty? Because someone who is alive doesn't stay in a tomb. They leave. All four of the books of the Bible known as the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all have the story of Jesus coming back to life in them. So I want you to pick one of those books of the Bible today, and I want you to read it before you eat your Easter meal today as a family. In Luke 24, verse 5, I love what is said when the angels appear at the tomb, when some of Jesus' friends went there to see what was going on, and it says, why do you seek the living among the dead? It would be like going to Chick-fil-A and trying to order a hamburger. That's not going to happen. All these things Jesus had been telling them and trying to have them understand before he suffered that horrible death, well, it was starting to make a little bit of sense to them. And I think it was starting to make even more sense and getting through to them when they actually see heavenly beings and an empty tomb. When you read the story for yourself, you'll read how Mary Magdalene and some of the other women had gone to the tomb because they were going to put special spices on Jesus's body, which was part of their custom and ways of doing things then. So can you imagine their shock and surprise to see not only that the tomb wasn't closed, but that there wasn't a body inside it for them to put all those special spices on? Just like you were expecting me to show you something when we looked inside this egg, those women were expecting something inside that tomb. Those disciples had expected certain things from Jesus too, and the Jewish people had thought that whoever their savior or Messiah would be, would be like a mighty warrior or a powerful king. They weren't expecting a savior like Jesus. We've talked about how parts of the Easter story are really hard to understand, like Jesus being beaten and made fun of, being tattled on by a friend and put on trial like a criminal and then punished like a sinner even though he is and was perfect, and then having to die so horribly. We've asked, why would that have to be part of the plan just so that we could be forgiven? Not what anyone would expect, huh? Does it make sense? And yet, that's what God had planned all along, which means we can trust it even if we don't always understand it. Like right now, back in January, after we finished celebrating Christmas and we thought about the next really big celebration we would all have, 
Three and a half months later, did any of us in our craziest dreams think that Easter morning would be like this? That there wouldn't be a giant egg hunt on the grass or coming to church to see friends and making crafts and playing games? Nope, not a chance. Not the plan we all had, but God knew. And he knows what is best for us and the best way to work it all out. He knew he needed a perfect sacrifice for all the wrong we would ever do that would keep us from him. God knew it could only be his perfect son, Jesus of Nazareth, a carpenter's son, born of a virgin Mary, promised as the Savior all the way back in the book of Genesis and spoken about all throughout the Old Testament, thousands of years before he would walk the earth and still spoken about now, 2,000 years later, after he walked out of a tomb, not as a ghost or a spirit, but as a flesh and blood, fully alive man. And that's what we celebrate today. We celebrate that fact. So we are excited that this last egg is empty because the tomb was empty, because you don't go looking for the living among the dead. We celebrate because our God is alive, our God can be trusted when, even when things don't make sense. We celebrate even if we don't all get to celebrate together or hunt eggs together or play together. We will get to do those things together one day. But until then, happy Resurrection Sunday. Stay well and be kind.